This is Mission Control Houston. Over the past week, we've been talking a little bit about how NASA is now accepting applications for its next group of astronauts. And we have with us here today a special guest to talk with us about the astronauts' uh, applications and what it's like to be an astronaut. This is Jeanette Epps, who is a member of our most recent class of astronauts and I think officially an astronaut now, right? That's correct. Well, thanks so much for, for joining with us. We really appreciate it. Um, tell us a little bit about your background, first of all. Well, um, I have a, a bachelor's degree in physics, and then I went on to graduate school, and um, I earned a, a master's and a PhD in aerospace, and I've worked for Ford Motor Company, and um, I even worked for the government. I worked for the CIA for about seven years. You probably can't tell us about that, or you'd have to kill us? Well, I won't do that this time. I've been cleared to tell you, hey, I worked at the CIA, so okay. it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Um, so at any point in that time, or had you always wanted to be an astronaut, or had that crossed your mind at all? Well, I think um, every kid wants to be an astronaut, and in some way, shape, or form. I was just uh, probably a little different in that even as a kid, I thought it was impossible to do. And I think as I got older and I met people who were applying to the astronaut program, I thought it was even more impossible. Really? You and had all those degrees and, and worked for the CIA, and you thought it was impossible to become an astronaut? Yes, and looking at um, the past astronauts and um, the people who are astronauts now, um, they're um, amazing people. And, um, you know, maybe um, I, n I never thought I was one of those people. And um, even though I work towards the goal of at least becoming a scientist, you know, when that little seed was put into my brain as a kid that you can be a scientist or an astronaut, you know, the, the scientist part seemed feasible. But astronaut, ah, impossible. Well, so what changed? Well, um, working hard through the years and just um, developing myself, I think um, I had a friend, Leland Melvin, who encouraged me to apply. A and fellow astronaut, right? That is correct. And um, every time I said, well, I don't think, you know, I don't think, you know, I'd be selected. And um, But I had other people say that to me as well. And um, I never thought I, I'd be selected. But I realized that this last time back in 2007, 2008 time frame, it may be my last chance. So I said, I'm going to just go for it. Okay. So um, what when you decided to go for it, what, what did you do? What was your first step? The first step was to at least apply. I have many people come to me and say, oh, I've always wanted to do that. And when I ask them whether or not they've applied, they always say no. And I'm like, oh, well, you'll never get it if you don't apply. Okay. Well, what, what's the application process like? Well, the application process was easy initially. You just go online and you submit your application. And um, you put in every detail you can to make sure your application looks great. But then it's the waiting that, that gets you because you got to wait to see if you get an interview. And getting an interview is um, it, it's just um, a feeling that I can't describe. And once you, you get an interview, you go through the first interview process, which is nerve-wracking because you're sitting at a table, and it's just you, and you have about 11 or 12 people around you, and they're questioning you. But we also had to you know, you know, give good answers and things like that. So that was just the first round. And then for us, we had a second round of interviews that we were called back for. Um, and getting the second interview was even more nerve-wracking than the first time. And so the second round of interviews meant they were really considering you, and you went through all the medical exams. And so that was a little bit different uh, from my understanding than in the past, where I think if you were selected for an interview, you went through the entire process, whereas this time they had two separate interviews. And so the second time, only 120 people came back and we were all given the physical exam, and we had to do another interview. So I think, let's see, originally several thousand people applied, right? They narrowed it down to how, uh, probably a few hundred for the first interview, then 120 for the second interview, and then it came down to just how many of y'all were actually chosen in the end? Well, there were nine Americans, and um, so it, it is um, a percent of a percent of a percent to be selected. And so that's, that's one reason why I never thought it was possible. I mean, when you think about the process and how many people apply, and then to be one of the few that's actually um, selected, it is, um, you know, when you think about it, it is, it's amazing to be here. So. But it clearly does happen, right? So you're here. I am truly an example of that. So I, am, I try to encourage people who have the right background and 
are interested, I try to encourage them no matter what, just apply and you never know what happens. And you never, you never know what happens uh, until you at least try and apply and go from there. Okay. Well, so um, as far as the interview process, was it different than other jobs that you've applied for? Or is it the same kind of questions or a lot, a lot more complex or harder or detailed? Well, the questions were um, were interesting, and um, uh, I think the method that they use, and maybe I'm wrong, but you can plan your your answers, and you could try to tailor the questions and try to get them to ask you certain questions that you practice. But they have such a rapid fire method of asking questions that you just start answering, and you you have no choice but to be yourself and be truthful. I and guess. be truthful, exactly. So um, I think the interview process was a little different because we went through medical, um, a lot of physical things as well as intellectual things things as well. So this job is different in that the physical aspect is included in the job. What would you say was, I don't know, the hardest part, or the, you know, the craziest question you got or the most memorable part? Well, um, one of the, during the interview process, we got to work out with um, Peggy Whitson and um, several other astronauts. And just the level of fitness of these ladies was amazing. Really? Yes, and and that was um for some reason that always stuck in my mind and even to that today when I think about the interview process that's one of the first things I think about. But then even beyond that sitting at the table and having to answer the questions and uh, <laughs> and just being very nervous, but you get to the point where you just have to answer and you answer honestly and truthfully because, you know, like I said that rapid fire method works really well. Okay. Well, um, so you made it through the application process. You became an astronaut or an astronaut candidate, I guess, first of all. What happened then? Well, we came on board, and um, it, we started from day one. Um, it, it became busy. We went to land survival training in Maine. And then after that, several of us who don't have a pilot's background, we went off to Pensacola for six weeks, and we learned how to basically just be safe pretty much in a T6 um, out of Pensacola. They taught us a great deal. But, you know, in six weeks you can't be become a, co a pilot in command of, of a plane just yet. So we get back from that and we start into the T-38 training, which has been um, amazing. I mean, when you think about it, you're sitting on a ejection seat and you're sitting in the back and you get to go, in some cases, Mach 1. So it's a supersonic jet and that's that's been great. But then after that, you know, we started into um, some scuba diving, preparing for the EVA training, robotics. And then beyond that, we had a lot of the ISS systems that we learned. Um, it's an amazing space station. So, and then after that, you know, we, we started in the Russian. So learning the Russian language also has been very interesting. <laughs> So let's see, learning to fly, learning another language. I think I saw a photo of you in a in a spacesuit in the water at the, the, the pool where we train for spacewalks. Quite a variety of, of activities, huh? Um, it's an amazing amount of activity. Um, I wouldn't trade this job for the world. It's one of the best things um, about this job is that you get to do so many cool things, and that's just in one month. <laughs> And that's just the training to, to prepare for the real job, right? That's correct. <laughs> that's correct. Okay. Well, what's been your favorite part so far? My favorite part is actually probably one of the toughest tasks, I think, um, most people will tell you in the core, that, um, it, which is the EVA stuff. Um, working out at the Neutral Buoyancy Lab and the thought of getting into a spacesuit, going into the water for six hours, and um, practicing, you know, maintenance tasks on the station, practicing installing um, new equipment on the station. It is one of the toughest jobs you'll ever uh, experience. I mean, for six hours you're in the suit and you're working. The suit is 300 pounds alone, over 300 pounds. And, um, you know, it's sometimes you're not so neutrally buoyant, so you, you do get a little tired. <laughs> and I'm understanding that, just a little tired. So four hours into this, you're thinking, wow, I've got two more hours. <laughs> but when you come out of the suit and you realize what you've just done, it is, um, it's a good feeling. Yeah, I bet. Well, um, how, how do you anticipate using your background, your degrees? I know, let's see, I think astronaut applicants are required to have a, a bachelor's degree in math, science, or engineering. Um, what, how, how are you going to use that? Well, I think um, most of the people in the Corps and the people that came in with me, we all have these varied backgrounds. And I think all of that experience plays into 
being able to adapt to whatever situation we're put into, but also in order to do the science that's required on the station, in order to understand the science and actually um, go through and do the experiments in a detailed way and produce good data for the scientists on the ground, and all of that data will be used for future exploration. So hopefully we can all contribute in some ways, shape or form to the future of exploration in that sense. I imagine so. And, and you anticipate going to the space station at some point, or what are, what are your hopes for the future? Well, I am hoping, but that's up to my boss, Peggy. Okay. So um, I am hoping to go, and um, I'm looking forward to, um, I mean, six months on the station, you can do quite a few things, and um, you do make it your home in that six-month time frame. So I'm looking forward to the space station being my home for six months. And in the meantime, what are you doing? In the meantime, um, I'm a part of the ISS integration branch, and I'm learning to become a Capcom. Okay. Um, You'll be working here in this room soon, maybe? I'm hoping. I'm hoping in the, the springtime to be a full-time employee in as a Capcom. We'll look forward to seeing you here. And I'm sorry, you said the other thing was working in the ISS integration branch? That's correct. And that's that um, looking at the ISS systems and looking at issues with the systems and working with the other components of um, like the EVA branch, robotics branch, and all of us working together to, to perform the tasks that's needed on the ISS. Okay. And I guess, um, you know, we talk about a lot how the International Space Station's getting us ready to go further out into space. And I'm sure that's something that a lot of the astronauts are, are thinking about a lot as well, right? That is correct. Um, I think in the in the near term, though, I think a lot of people are looking forward to um, the space station. Well, flying on the Soyuz and going to the space station, but also working with the commercial crew office and looking at what's on the horizon. Okay. Well, any um, final advice for anybody who's thinking about uh, applying or have has already applied and maybe is um, anticipating hearing back soon? Um, I would. Um, I have two pieces of advice. One is at least apply. Just make sure you apply. You never, if you if Can't you don't hurt, apply, right? yeah, you you'll never get in. So at least apply. And the second thing is um, um, to have a career that you're working in currently that you're very happy with, because um, you never know what will happen. But you want to make sure at the end of all this, you're you're still happy. So, Do, were you think you're happy where you ended up? I'm extremely happy where I ended up. Um, I don't think um, there's another job um, like it. So, okay. yeah, I'm extremely well, happy. Well, thanks so much for talking with us. We really appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me. Again, this is Jeanette Epps, a member of uh, our most recent astronaut class. And as we've been talking about, we are now taking applications for our next astronaut class. You can go to www.nasa.gov slash flynasa to, uh, first of all, find out more about the astronaut application process. And then also uh, you can find a link from there to the Fly NASA blog, which uh, Jeanette is featured on at the moment. She has a blog and some photos of her time uh, so far here in the astronaut office that you can take a look at there. Again, that address is www.nasa.gov slash Thanks so much.